So it's three past two Central European time. Welcome to the session 12. Uh, so the name of the session is the role of research funding organizations to support the uptake of responsible research and innovation. So building a RRI based evaluation framework for research funding agencies. I'm sharing the session with uh, Mika Nieminen. So at New Horizons project, we were uh, uh, managers of social lab and pilots in security program. And in that uh, uh, social lab, we had excellent pilots and some of our speakers come from those pilots. So for example, Tina Ule was the facilitator for our social lab, that was excellent work. And then Emat and all of it. And then we have some, let's say, external key keynotes like Lucas, but also in the new, from the New Horizon project and Nien. So, this is my main question. And this is what I hope that till this session can uh, at least partially have an answer. So how we can fund resource responsibly, responsible innovation. Because as we know, of course, all research, innovation and development work should be ethical. It should be following laws and regulations. But when you go to that voluntary uh, area, let's say responsible research and innovation keys like gender, not all of them are regulated. Uh, engagement can happen in a various ways. So this is something that I want to discuss and find out uh, via presentations that how can funders uh, make criteria that will then uh, enhance innovation to be more responsible. So this is the agenda. So first Tina will uh, share experience, experiences from their pilot and then Ulle and Lucas also will give uh, experiences how to implement, how to integrate RRI today organization, today funding calls, good uh, experiences, bad experiences. And then we have uh, had uh, uh, comments, presentations from funding organizations. Then Emma will give us the idea that what could be the indicators to go towards the development of, let's say, more responsible innovation practices and how funders can really monitor and evaluate those projects, organizations from that perspective. And then Nian will give us the more broader picture. So how the ecosystem can then take into account and how funders, universities, industry, uh, policymakers, but uh, quite importantly, citizens and society can be part of this um, uh, effort. And then we will have on, let's say, practical uh, experience from all of it. Uh, so how they have uh, uh, made a pilot uh, with a Polish University College, uh, including RRI aspects to the curriculum, but also talking about a little bit broader that how this security ecosystem could uh, be supported by RRI approach. And then Mika will wrap up uh, the discussion and we will have the more general discussion in the end of the session. So this is just to show that uh, as European Commission has put RRI a lot of emphasis, as we know, uh, and it will, like we have heard in the previous sessions, it will continue in the Horizon Europe. But as we know, European Commission, Horizon Europe and different other instruments in the EC, they are not just only, let's say, one piece of the whole funding ecosystem. So there will be business, private funding, there will be foundations, charities, there will be third countries, associate countries. And now it's interesting to see that how we could harmonize or is it even possible to harmonize this kind of, an, let's say, criteria for different kind of funding organizations, but also different kind of context, different kind of projects. So how to customize this kind of an approach 
for different purposes. So this is the old statistics from probably 2011, it seems. But here, I can just to say that, for example, here we can see that EU funding is not the most important, uh, for example, in Finland or in UK. Even uh, Academy Finland and Research Councils are bigger uh, at that time, at least in Finland and UK. And I think that the, even we can think that EU has really supported and enhanced uh, broader uh, perspective in responsibility, not just ethics. So even in Academy of Finland, it's still kind of an starting that journey. Uh, in UK, probably Research Council had had this area approach, so anticipation, uh, reflectivity, uh, engagement and responsiveness. So they had a bit more, they are a bit more advanced in, in, in let's say, in our right journey. And this is my second uh, important question, I think that, and it relates to the ecosystem quadruple or quintuple helix. So how then funders can really assure that the society will get benefit from the research development and innovation that they are funding. So I hope that we will receive some answers, questions, comments uh, during this uh, session. And uh, like I said, it's now your turn, uh, Tina, to share your experiences and please introduce yourself in the beginning of the presentation. Thank you. And all the participants, just give your comments, questions to the chat, and we will pick up from there. Okay, Tina. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, anyway, it, in Finland, it's, it's afternoon at the moment. Uh, and um, I'm here from, from Tampere region, uh, representing the Council of Tampere region where I work as an advisor of regional development and funding. Happy to be here. Happy to see that so many of you are here with us in this session. Thank you for the organizers and, uh, and the questions that we raised there up in, in his slides. I, I have to say that I'm also looking for, forward to hear the answers to those questions. Let's say like this, I'm not promising any, any uh, clear clear uh, uh, concepts for, for them in this presentation. But yes, happy to be here. First of all, I would like to ask of, of, of you to, to one question from all of you, uh, whether you know where Tampere region is. Uh, please raise your hand uh, from the, the right hand uh, in, in the selection bar, there is the reaction button. And there you can, you can raise hand if, if you know where Tampere region is. Uh, Pia will assist me and uh, count the hands while I start sharing my presentation. So do you know where, where Tampere region is located to? Pia, do we have any results? Yes, <clears throat> and five persons. Only five? Okay. Six, seven. <laughs> I will put this screen smaller so that you don't need to watch it. Um, I will show Nine. you where it is. Can you see my presentation? I hope so. Yes, so we are located in the, in the southwest of Finland. Uh, I'm not going through all these data that is presented in this slide. I just want you to, to know that uh, Tampere region is a half a million inhabitant region, very fast growing region uh, with a very strong background in industry, ICT, uh, and, uh, and we have one big university here uh, in the region. And if, if I tell shortly about the innovation context, what's the innovation ecosystem like? I have to say that we have many good innovation actors in the region but not too many. So we are small, but still uh, kind, of, uh, kind of active and, and uh, being able to uh, implement and execute things. Was there somebody trying to say something? 
I heard some kind of breathing, but maybe not. Okay, uh, and shortly about the councils where I work for. Um, the councils in Finland, they are uh, municipality funded regional develop developers, development organizations responsible for, for example, delivering some, some parts of the structural funds. If you know structural funds, you know that they, they, they are the EU money that is delivered to, to regions and nations, uh, and we are delivering part of the, the funds to our region. Basically, what we do is we fund uh, innovation and development projects that universities, development agencies, municipalities, and uh, research organizations uh, execute and implement. Uh, what I'm here to tell you is, is some work that we have been doing in, in a project called Marie, which is an EU uh, Interreg Europe funded project. Uh, and in Marie project, we, um, we were focusing on RRI elements that could be uh, implemented into, into regional activities. In, in Marie project, we started to, to study uh, how uh, regional innovation projects uh, are actually uh, evaluated. And we realized that, um, for example, ethical evaluation, when, when uh, you're talking about innovation projects, was not uh, at all existing. Um, uh, and um, if you think about the, the themes that we actually fund, so you see in this slide now, uh, some of the themes that are very, very popular in the projects that we are funding. So, for example, projects that include development of new technologies. So we talk about artificial intelligence, uh, projects related to robotics, 5G, solution, uh, 5G solutions, machine learning. Also, uh, projects with uh, autonomous vehicle development, uh, not necessarily the the car development, but uh, development of, of technology and some pilots, uh, projects with circle uh, in for projects for circular economy are popular, uh, but also uh, general more general ecosystem network network building uh, projects. And if you if you when you look at these themes, you can understand that some of them are particularly uh, uh, interesting and. Um, uh, relevant when you talk about the element, element, elements of RRI. So, uh, in Marie project, we decided um, that uh, let's pilot uh, uh, an external uh, evaluation criteria where we actually could include some of the ethical uh, and other RRI elements so that the, the applicants who uh, try to ask, uh, try to apply money from us, uh, would have to actually reply to these issues to us. So what we did is we uh, added and developed together with the University of Tampere and, and VTT uh, evaluation criteria uh, that included elements of ethical evaluation, uh, evaluation of transparency and openness, safety and reliability, and also a, a question about engagement. Engagement is of course very important when you talk about how the, the impacts and uh, uh, results of the projects uh, are accepted and, and how, how they are desirable for the whole community. Uh, how did we do this, um, this uh, criteria is that technically is that we added uh, additional documents that included uh, these questions uh, related to these uh, RRI elements and every single applicant had to uh, reply to those questions to us, write an answer basically for us. And based on the answers, we, we evaluated their, um, their uh, this criteria. Why did we want to do it like this? Is because uh, what we mainly wanted to achieve is is the increase of the regional skills to assess and anticipate and reflect the, the possible impacts of their projects. So this is basically, we wanted to educate, to teach them to, to assess and, and, and uh, re reflect uh, the things that they are doing in these innovation projects. 
Um, no, well, I, next I will show you some of the results, what we uh, experienced with, with these pilots. Actually, this evaluation criteria was in, included into three different funding calls, so it was implemented already uh, three times. Uh, and um, based on those uh, pilots, we, we realized that these applicants could be divided into three different categories. These categories actually show that uh, how these kind of uh, evaluation criteria are uh, in this this field are accepted. How how do the applicants felt about this? Um, so the first criteria is the skeptics. As you can imagine, it was not easy for for uh, many of the applicants. Um, they were not really understanding how their project was related to this kind of uh, elements of ethics or or uh, safety or transparency. Uh, they were feeling that it was just an extra bureaucracy that they had to do to fill in this, uh, this um, document and answer to these questions. Uh, and what was interesting is that their, in their opinion, um, these, uh, this kind of issue should be supervised by an authority. So they were not thinking that it was necessarily their own responsibility to supervise that these, these elements were uh, were happening, they were wanted us to, to supervise that and take care of that they, they work responsibly. This was interesting in my opinion. So then the, the group of neutrals, um, which was not actually a neutral, but you can call them in, in this presentation neutral ones, um, they were not against this kind of uh, extra criteria or, or ethical uh, evaluation, but they were already kind of thinking that they are already responsible. They were kind of thinking that uh, the cost efficiency and uh, data uh, management issues are good enough to be responsible. So um, they were kind of accepting that these criteria, yes, these are important, but already we are so responsible that this is not actually anything ex extra that we have to consider or, or, uh, or uh, do or, or change in our project plan. And then there are the forerunners who were actually a group of, uh, group of pro project actors who, who had already been uh, hoping and waiting for this kind of criteria to, to exist. So they were, they were thinking that this was a very, very positive change uh, that gave them new ideas and, and helped us ac actually help them to write their funding application. Um, and to compare to the, the skeptic groups, they were thinking that this supervision should be done by them. So they, they have to be able to uh, understand and evaluate uh, the, the, how these kind of elements should be in their project and how they are also me measured and monitored. So they did not need any authority to supervise them in this subject. So what did we learn? This is, this is my sli last slide. Um, uh, what, what did we learn? So the basic idea that uh, what I have been thinking that these pilots explained us is that in order to, to receive this kind of uh, responsible innovation culture, which is of course the, the basic idea that we want, uh, we want to achieve, to, to change the culture of doing innovations, is that you need, of course, this kind of top-down approaches. You need these kind of top-down uh, motivation factors like, like funding and, okay, regulation. You can, you can make this kind of criteria in order to kind of boost and push people to, to make the change. But at the same time, you need a lot effort to, to, for the bottom-up approaches. You need to dig into those values and, and thoughts that there are in, in the different actors and what do they think about, what do they, they need, what do they think that is, is meaningful. And you need to uh, uh, raise awareness in these subjects because you, you, can, you could see from those two, three groups that I presented that um, awareness raising is really <laughs> needed because it, it is not there. Uh, yes, I should take some kind of PowerPoint courses in order to draw my pictures a little bit better, but this is, um, this is my picture anyway. Uh, sorry for that. 
Uh, so basically, you need the top down and bottom up. You need both of them and you need to do, work with them all the time and over and over again and try to find different kind of approaches how to change the culture slowly. You need organizational changes, you need resources, you need more resources. You also need strategic vision. Uh, and my colleagues will, will present all more about this later in their presentations today. You need patience. It takes time to change this kind of culture and, and um, there's nothing we can do about it. So, so thank you. I'm happy to hear if you have any questions for me. Thank you, Tina. Uh, Pia, is there any questions in the chat? I didn't see. No, any? there are no questions yet. Yeah. But Does maybe, anyone yeah. want to raise hand now or save the question in the latter part of discussion? No raised hands. So I, I have a short question. So mm -hmm. because I'm not sure if I uh, heard it in the beginning. Are you continuing the experience of uh, implementing LRI criteria, mm -hmm. ethical criteria to your funding calls? Mm. It's a good question. Um, as many of you might know, the, the period of structural funds is, is change, changing now. The new period is starting uh, this year. Uh, and uh, we are still waiting for the national, uh, national um, criteria to be developed, finalized. Uh, so basically, when we, when we get those, we have to see that, because I know that it will change. Actually, the the, the capabilities and skills for, for assessment and anticipations will be even more important in the next funding period mm. because those, those questions uh, related to human uh, rights uh, uh, and, uh, and gender issues, for example, they will be even in a more, uh, even a bigger um, how do you say scale in the next funding yeah. period? So we will wait for the, the the finalized national criteria, and then we will see how we will be able to to implement this criteria into the next period. Okay, thank you very much, Tina. Thank you. Excellent presentation. So next in the row is uh, Ulle. So please, floor is yours, and introduce shortly yourself in the beginning. Thank you. Uh, hi. Uh, do you see me? Do you hear me? We'll see you and please just be close to microphone. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, as we are talking about RRI, it's a context of the funding organization in today's session. I'll focus on this aspect uh, in my self introduction. Uh, in, for the last 20 years, I have worked in all research and higher education funding organizations in Estonia, that is, in all three. In uh, parallel, I have been closely involved in the FRIME program and European Science and Technology program post activities as PC and CSO member. And uh, why I'm here is because in New Horizon project uh, I was facilitator, but at the same time member of RRI network, uh, where participated mainly funding organizations. And secondly, uh, at the moment I'm working for Etna System project, where my task is uh, to implement uh, 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 ethical uh, several tasks in, uh, in my organization. And now uh, talking about um, the RRI, first I want to show you as example uh, uh, a slide from my presentation in, uh, in the International Conference of uh, Scientometrics and Infometrics, which will be held on 12th of um, uh, July. And why I wanted to show it, uh, uh, for me, this is a good example of the impact uh, that the funder has on boosting the research area direction. 
uh, as you see, uh, uh, since uh, 2011, uh, there was exact growth in, uh, in the publications uh, uh, on topic RRI. But uh, uh, talking about funding organization, I concentrate on two of them. Uh, one Estonian Research Council and uh, another Education and Youth Board. And uh, uh, in this case, um, I would say that uh, uh, RRI is not easy issue for uh, research funding uh, organizations because they are used uh, with exact terms that formulation because they have to but uh, if you think about definitions on RRI it is not easy task and uh, in case of uh, funding organizations they have uh, different uh, different tasks different obligations and it, uh, it differ by country as Estonia is a small country then uh, all those tasks are rather mixed. We are implementers, we are policy makers, also we are initiators. And a good, a good example here is Estonian Research Council. Uh, for example, three main uh, uh, documents, uh, Estonian Code of Conduct for Research Integrity, uh, Open Science Principles, uh, uh, they, they all are initiated, initiated uh, first of all, by Estonian Research Council. Yes, of course, is the help of very wide round of stakeholders. And uh, in the case of in engagement, I would say that I like very much uh, the uh, initiative, how do you know? Because firstly it was started during our parliamentary election, but now during COVID the pandemic, it was very good tool to involve res researchers to tell fact-based information to public in large. And in funding criteria, we, first of all, very main place, uh, place uh, research ethics. Yes, of course, this uh, uh, human participation or involvement of animals, but also gender, age, culture, or all other diversity issues, also issues of policy, societal, historical, and other sensitive topics. And, and also there's need uh, for action plan uh, to address the legal requirement, for example, ethics committee approval, and also to foresee potential research integrity risk, uh, which may arise during the project. And also Estonian uh, there's uh, criteria for open science, uh, need for research data management issues, including data storage, backup, data protection, data ownership, and uh, institutional open access. Uh, a big different situation is uh, gender mainstreaming. Uh, I have discussed this with several experts and uh, here history, our background play, plays the role. And uh, here the main ideas and the main rules uh, came from the European Union, from uh, it is obligatory in uh, structural funds uh, calls and, uh, and also thanks to Horizon uh, uh, 2020 project, the uh, Estonian Research Council have now gender equality plan. 
and uh, we don't have one minute uh, Ola. yeah yeah one minute oh and also we don't have specific program but there are several monitoring issues uh, and last uh, talk about uh, Etna system project uh, uh, Arno it means education and uh, youth board is brand new organization which merged four organization and I would say that this is really challenge to work on this project. At the end of this project, we will have a, a representative nominated. We agreed on code of ethics and code of practice. We, we have ethic committee and ethic line, and also indicators to monitor the process. So it is very briefly what I, I wanted to talk and, uh, and we, we will discuss further. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ulle. Do we now have uh, questions to Ulle or Tina? We have. Okay. We have one from, from Leonardo. Sousa, if I'm pronouncing the name correctly. Um, so I just read the question. Um, he says, new technologies could introduce unexpected and unwanted effects in societal and environment arenas. Some experts suggest to include scientific early warning studies um, in the criteria of funding innovation projects. It's my impression some of the projects presented here did not consider this kind of criteria, question mark. Why not? So um, <clears throat> he basically asks um, that some expert, like why some projects do not um, include the um suggested scientific early warning studies yes exactly so why tina why why this kind of an uh, approach or criteria was not included in the call was it not relevant or how do you justify your uh, option mm, i have to say that i'm not so familiar with the uh, early warning studies. What do you, what do you mean with them? Sorry, I'm not so I'm not working for the academic field, so maybe that's that's why. Uh, um, but what I understand is is that is the meaning of the question. Maybe is that um, um, that when you when you do those technologies, that then maybe you have this kind of, some regulations or or kind of uh, pre-studies of, of what, what are the risks in those technologies. Uh, of course, when you, when you fund projects that deal with technologies directly, uh, for example, related to artificial intelligence, mm. you could find um, actually several good studies and already, uh, already created uh, for example, this kind of framework and and uh, criteria that already kind of regulate the artificial intelligence. Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, um, but the, the problem in our case is that uh, in our projects that we fund, they do not develop technologies. So they are not in, in hands on in, in the technology itself. The, the projects that we fund are more kind of cooperative uh, trying to enhance the capabilities of, of, of company, for example, to start taking small steps into artificial intelligence. So definitely when you deal with projects dealing, dealing with uh, directly with the technology and kind of do the deep technology, this kind of more, more um, in uh, hands on uh, criteria and studies are necessary. That's, that's all I can say about it. Yeah. Thanks. Yes, uh, the same because uh, those organizations are funding academic research. Uh, mm -hmm. But 
Yes, of course, uh, this risk assessment is for sure, but not specifically this. Okay. Uh, Thank but, you very uh, much. It is part of risk assessment. Yeah, yeah, and I have to add to Ule that uh, uh, because we, it's also because the, the, the variety of different projects is so large in, in our case and in, in many cases of, of funders, is that you have to find ways to, to, to make questions that give possibility to the applicants to explain that they have actually read those early warning studies. Mm. And they have already recognized that in these studies, these kind of risks were raised up. And this is how we actually try to manage the risks. So our questions uh, were meant to do that. So we did not make them specific, but we opened them so that they, the applicants have possibility to show their skills of assessing yeah. things. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> So let's move on. Thank you, Ulle and, and uh, Tina for answers. And we will continue the discussion in the end of the session. So now it's your turn, Lucas. Please share your presentation and introduce yourself shortly. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Lukas Matsenauer, uh, and I'm uh, greeting you from uh, the technological agency, technology agency of the Czech Republic from Prague. And I'm very happy to be to be here with you today and take part in this, um, I would say, critical uh, uh, discussion, which we are um, basically developing all over these four years of New Horizon, uh, trying to do something new, something uh, that might seem even impossible, and that's also reflected in the name of our today's session, isn't it? And I'm saying. Uh, it's a mission possible with a lot of patience, uh, with a lot of, um, uh, you know, chance taking and, and opportunity catching. Uh, let me first introduce the, the institution. Uh, we are um, an organizational unit of the state. It's a government agency. Uh, we are surprisingly enough uh, slightly competing with one or two other institutions of the kind, which I would say uh, might be a hindrance on one hand. On the other hand, uh, it creates a very healthy um, um, competitive environment uh, even, which, um, which helps uh, push things forward uh, internally. Um, we manage a series of uh, uh, state funding programs and of course, there is a there is a whole new line of projects uh, that are international, um, co-funds, um, um uh, programs, and also um, uh, we are uh, very interested in in working uh, on uh, projects just like New Horizon in the new um, new program uh, of Horizon Europe. So, what could be more exciting than devising and then evaluating uh, new projects and, and their, their applications and reports, right? Well, uh, I have been with the agency for, for a bit more than a year now as, a, as an employee. I, I used to work as, a, as an extra uh, for, for several years. And uh, of course, you know, these numbers look much more uh, impressive when you think in euros, uh, we still have our own currency, which is Czech Corona, and and that's like 25 times uh, less, right? So so take it with a pinch of salt, but still, um, the the firepower of the institution is not um, it's not too small. Um, we are 10 million nation, and apparently um, uh, the 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 need and the the, the the emphasis on, on innovation is just the same as in any other European country. And um, even, even more so with um, the, the need to uh, actually apply what has been um, uh, invented and, and with, with a lot of pressure on, on the actual implementation of, uh, of um, the results, which, um, you know, uh, brought around um, some, some good practices that we are now sharing. Uh, for example, 
in in a uh, in an uh, uh, international RFO improvement project called Leap SME, which is a so-called exploitation guarantor, uh, and 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 others. So um, why I'm saying this? Well, um, some of the uh, some of the um, participants um, are the, the small and medium sized. Some are large, as you can see. But what's very interesting to see is that the small enterprises are very uh, uh, well uh, represented here, and and were very well funded uh, in in relation to to others, uh, which I am including in this presentation to. Um, to stress one or the first important point why I think that uh, bringing in and, and supporting uptake of RRI uh, is that, you know, with small and medium enterprises, you have a very, very direct relationship with the top management, with the founders, with people who can actually make a difference. And uh, the smaller the business, uh, the, the, the better they know why they are doing something with you, uh, why they are interested in funding, and it, uh, uh, you know, creates a window of opportunity, one of one of a few that um, uh, appear in this context. So, uh, currently, uh, there is a lot of buzz around impact, and uh, of course, uh, the agency needs to evaluate impact in terms of uh, the traditional um, money spent, return on investment uh, uh, dimension or level. However, uh, what's becoming um, ever more important, and I, let me let me uh, uh, refer to our uh, session number five we had last Friday, where we concluded um, as people from academia and people from business and people from from RFOs and of course investment funds that um, social impact and uh, the general public good is becoming uh, almost uh, as important to the to the uh, commercial funders as it is to us from the from the government side so uh, this needs to be and and actually is uh, taken into account um, uh, more and more in what we do. Um, and uh, I also included this, this last point here, INCA is a, uh, a long-term um, analytical um, uh, endeavor that we are taking to actually follow uh, the, the innovation capacities in the country. And, you know, knowing what you work with helps a lot in planning those uh, incentives and uh, and programs, and uh, of course there is there is this micro level um, uh, that that Ula talked about, you know, and the macro level uh, of sustainable goals, which uh, apparently uh, we are all aware of and and, and trying to uh, to kind of uh, reflect in our work, and this brings me to a to another point, you know. De facto, and this has been mentioned in one of the articles um, published by the New Horizon team, de facto, there is a number of principles already um, uh, followed by, by uh, RFOs, by, by research funding um, organizations. Um, it's, a lot of it has been established for a pretty long time. Uh, think gender, think uh, participatory um, uh, methods, uh, or you know, public participation. Uh, that's already there. It just didn't have the name, and of course, when it's some, when something doesn't have the name or unifying um, unifying category, it's harder to, to to push it and and be ready for those uh, windows of opportunity. So what we are doing currently is, of course, uh, New Horizon, which which brought the the term the unifying uh, category, uh, and which. I would say was was a big surprise for a lot of people in the institution uh, in terms of its impact on us. Uh, there are new projects coming up or already running, like GCO focusing at, uh, I'll look at these in a minute, focusing at gender or pro-ethics, um, uh, focusing at the uh, participation, uh, which have been directly influenced 
by, by work on New Horizon. Uh, there is a, uh, an internal uh, development project focusing on strategy management, which uh, brings a lot of uh, uh, RI principles as they stand in New Horizon sense um, into the, the agency, you know, into the actual uh, uh, coordination and, 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 uh, 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 and regulations inside the, uh, the agency. And then the core business of the, of the organization, the funding programs, are being infused with, uh, with RRI principles. And, um, you know, we are lucky enough, as I understood from the discussions, the preparatory discussions, which I'm very grateful for, Vika, you, you organized for this, where I, I realized that, you know, having an, a, a, method, a methodological support uh, uh, a department, uh, which is aware and even tasked with bringing in RRI, is a very uh, important uh, thing. So uh, I, I let me marinate you in a, in a load of text here. <laughs> uh, not to worry, you know. Uh, I just I just want to uh, uh, to have you look at uh, those projects, which uh, are really building on uh, what we as a New Horizon uh, a team uh, understand under RI, and it's bringing it into life. Um, not always all of the principles, but definitely. Uh, those that are that are relevant in a in the given given time and uh, and context. So Chico uh, 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 making uh, gender a thing in the STEM uh, area where you know this wasn't always the case. Proethics uh, bringing uh, tools, IT tools uh, uh, into you know experimental phase for organizations like ours and. What I mentioned, smarter admin project, which um, you know, it's basically a continuation of New Horizon inside of of, of uh, our uh, organization. Now uh, we are happy to have our own department, of course, uh, uh, and and I'm, I'm I'm mentioning it because uh, you know without someone actually, you know, tasked with with uh, uh, you know bringing up the the topics, uh, working on um, on actual pilots, experiments, and, and I'd say waiting for those windows of, of opportunity to open is very, uh, very helpful. Uh, I, I mentioned funding here, of course, uh, because um, it's uh, something that, you know, in our case is something that, that's combined, you know, with, uh, uh, of course, the, the institutional funding, but then uh, we bring in uh, people from projects who are, uh, who are funded otherwise, and it gives us a bit more firepower, I'd say. Um, of course, <laughs> you know, RRI is being sometimes labeled as a fuzzy concept. Well, that's the best we have, and we should be really grateful for having it, uh, because now we can really implement things um, under uh, a unifying uh, name. Uh, we can use it as a scaffolding for formulating those those initiatives in the funding programs when the window of opportunity opens. I've used the term so many times. I have to explain why. You know, um, the lifespan of a of a funding program is five to eight years in our case, and uh, the slight resets that you need to do from time to time come with uh, with a series of calls. So, um, you know, what I think uh, is important to, to enable RFOs to actually support the uptake of RRI is to uh, keep it uh, alive, to, to, to prepare things well ahead, well in advance, to negotiate it with, with uh, the management, possibly with, with, uh, with uh, representatives of the government who question everything, and of course with the target groups where uh, well, having data, having contacts, having real, lively um, uh, conversations with um, with the target group is uh, is just critical if you really want to bring in uh, an extra, which which in the end what it, what it is uh, is is an uh, is an extra bracket, uh, extra point in your in your application 
or uh, you know um, something that that they need to they need to bring in. So thank you, thank you. Mission Impossible. You know this is us. We can make it. You know we are. I think we know what we're doing, and I believe you know it's very very positive what we've heard that uh, uh, the RI. Um, uh, concept is, is going to be uh, acknowledged and, and brought forward by the by the Commission in the coming years. So what I'm saying, impact, what we want to have the positive impact is desirable for both public and private sectors. I'm saying it after f three years of talking to SMEs and, and businesses from this standpoint, RI is fragile but tangible. Let's, uh, let's uh, cherish that and, and build on that. Uh, there's no actual conflict, you know, if we need it or not. This usually misconceptions. It's already there in de facto, and we need to educate everyone around us. And that's been said. It's going to be said today, I believe, again and again. So if not us, then who? Yes, thank you very much, Lucas. We have an excellent uh, question from Marcus. I will shorten it. So just for you, but I hope that we have time to discuss it in the uh, okay. session. So what do you think? Should we also evaluate uh, to applying organization if it's in what maturity level in RRI and put that as a criteria for funding also? So if they are not taking into account, for example, science education, capacity building or open access, because now we are evaluating proposals and probably scientists, but not the organization itself. So what is your first, let's say, reaction to that question? Well, uh, I think we should use whatever is available to to target these weak points. I've never been a friend, and this is my personal take on this, uh, but I've never been a friend of just building on your strengths because your weakness can kill you. And it's that's 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 a matter of fact. Whenever you are an entrepreneur or a, or a bigger bigger institution, so what I'm I'm saying, yes, let's let's definitely uh, put some uh, attention in this yeah. in this direction. For sure. And incentive in that sense. I think so, yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. So we are a bit behind schedule, so, but I think that we can still prolong the session a bit. But uh, I will uh, welcome the next speaker. So Emmat, uh, please introduce yourself also in the beginning. I think that now we will hear more about that. What could be then the indicators, for example, and criteria for different kind of um, uh, purposes in this team. So, Emma, floor is yours. We can't hear you, by the way. We can see your slides, but we cannot hear you. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not coming through. Yeah, now can you hear me? Now it's working. Now yes. we can hear yes. you. Thank yeah? you. Okay, so, and you can also see the slides. Yes. Yes, perfect. So, uh, I, uh, I would like to, maybe the slides is in the time mode, I don't know, maybe I will just uh, look at the slideshow, it's okay, okay. It was good. Yeah, it was good, okay. So, uh, following the discussion uh, about uh, uh, what we had about responsible innovation implementation within the uh, context of research funding organization. I would like to uh, go through the uh, monitoring practices and evaluation criteria that uh, we have observed and uh, we have been working on uh, together with the research performing and research uh, uh, funded organization and different kind of uh, stakeholders and uh, to understand and identify uh, how we can uh, evaluate uh, the implementation of responsible innovation how, and how organization can see uh, uh, this implementation of responsible innovation. And uh, just, oh, yeah, uh, just uh, introduce myself, I forgot that I'm a senior researcher at the University of Delft University of Technology and consultant Yagma. Uh, I have been working on a responsible innovation since a couple of years ago and uh, the concept uh, what we observed so i can jump into the uh, to the to the uh, to the slide what we have been observed uh, so far the i will start with the organizational challenges of responsible innovation and then try to see how we can bridge between what is going on and responsible innovation and uh, rfo research funding organization and how we can basically craft a kind of monitoring and evaluation strategy for 
implementation of responsible innovation. And uh, for that, uh, there are several organizational uh, challenges that uh, what uh, myself and colleagues uh, have been observed. Uh, one of which uh, you can see is ranged from the different uh, there are different criteria from the lack of management uh, support. So if the management from the organization engaged in the, the process in connection to the research funding organization or not, and uh, how uh, the role of research funding organization plays uh, in that regard in case of the if our responsible innovation at the core of the, the funding uh, uh, program or not. So, uh, and then from the organization side into which, or which, or, uh, which organization do they want to report? Do they want to report uh, for, um, for uh, a responsible innovation against the responsible innovation principles uh, for research fund organization or within their uh, like uh, uh, shareholders and stakeholders that they have? And then for that, so they have, uh, they, uh, we have seen some unclear objectives and uh, targets for the teams and uh, lines of, uh, or lines of different lines of uh, hierarchy of organization. So of course, what we could see that clearing these objectives by research funding organization uh, can support the uptake of responsible innovation, but still you need some resources as uh, Tina mentioned, resources and more resources and ability to, uh, to basically go through the uh, implementation. So how uh, the organization, uh, what kind of ability they have uh, and their own. And at the end is a, a budget uh, point of view, how they increase the investment to capture the full range of the return on implementation of uh, responsible innovation. And that is uh, basically the challenges uh, that um, uh, uh, what we can see. And then by that, um, how to cope with the challenges, how to cope with these challenges. Uh, of course, we need to br bridge between the gap between the responsible innovation, which is the uh, is a bridge, uh, is a gap between the responsible innovation and uh, RRI, or, uh, RRI principles and the uh, research fund organization. And there are stakeholders, of course. And the way forward, what we could uh, see and uh, what we experienced so far is that connecting responsible innovation practices and cases to uh, existing uh, indicators and criteria, performance criteria of a team, project, and organization can be of help. And uh, advantage of setting indicators for responsible innovation and other socio-technical uh, issues is that this helps to easier to integrate uh, with existing uh, procedures that is going on at uh, part of organization. That is something that research funding organization uh, probably look at it, uh, how to integrate with existing procedures of the organization who are dealing with and then connect, uh, contacting, which kind of prints, and then also uh, the indicators are principles and terminology already known by uh, organization and uh, uh, organization who are in the funding program and also involving uh, specific uh, organization and company function uh, that uh, as a, as a uh, part of the help of uh, um, uh, indicator set. And for that, we have uh, two examples or two tangible outcomes, let's say. Uh, one of which is the uh, pre-standards of uh, responsible innovation management system in industry that uh, has been finalized actually last uh, month and then it's gonna be uh, published uh, fully uh, by the end of June, we believe by SEN. SEN is the European uh, Committee of Standardization. So we have been working with uh, SEN uh, to, uh, to make a standard of responsible innovation management system, which is coming uh, at, the end of the, uh, at the end of the June. And this uh, standard is aligned with the ISO high level uh, structure of management system, ISO 9, 9001 and uh, is also built on experience of the ISO 26,000 social responsibility and ISO 31,000 risk management. And uh, the standards that I'm talking is, uh, is, is, is uh, valid for uh, next three years for the pre standard and it's gonna be reviewed again and is potentially to be integrated within the context of the SEN uh, standardization uh, and also national, national standardization organization uh, what we have been so far in contact is the uni in Italy and also NEN in Netherlands. So there are 
uh, they are delighted to include and integrate this innovation management system. Uh, and then uh, the good thing is of this SEN is that uh, this SEN, uh, SEN, uh, SEN um, uh, standard is that, so it's looking at the research and innovation value change for the whole, for the entire. And uh, so this is, uh, this is ongoing uh, uh, um, activities. Uh, that, that's, a, that's basically uh, what have been done and ongoing uh, procedures that, uh, for integration of uh, these uh, standards is going on. And uh, the other outcomes is was uh, some of uh, the participants might uh, uh, um, contribute to the assessment of responsible innovation edited volume that uh, myself and Ivo van den Poel, a colleague of mine, we have uh, edited. Uh, so the, the book is the, uh, uh, having the methods and practices and tools uh, that uh, can be uh, can be also can be found here open access by scanning this QR code uh, that the, over the, the, in the tools in the, this book that basically we have been some examples for research uh, performing and research uh, funding organization also uh, how to assess uh, the responsible uh, practices and by that I would like to uh, jump into uh, the, uh, the the uh, point of the crafting of monitoring and evaluation a strategy for responsible innovation. And it could be a kind of the organizational agnostic, uh, the type of organization agnostic, but at the outcome of our work with colleagues, uh, we have developed a kind of the framework for structuring the implementing responsible innovation and monitor the progress in uh, different kind of organization uh, like a research fund organization and public organization. And overall responsible innovation, we could see that is a not a, a not a, a event. It's a journey and it's quite a long journey. And you will go through many uh, iteration of responsibility over time and you have to, you understand it uh, to be embedded in your organization. And in our framework, uh, we follow the kind of the circle that you can see on the screen that is a three overall phases. Uh, so engagement phases and uh, ev evolution phase and uh, execution phase. And for uh, engagement, I would like to start with the materiality and feedback because it start from the uh, materiality and the uh, organization um, need to actively actually uh, reach out to their stakeholders in the beginning as we also uh, is, uh, uh, is reflected in, uh, is also tuned. Uh, 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 reflected in other talks, so to their, uh, so they need to reach out to their stakeholders and the public to create and to uh, continue uh, the dialogue around a responsible innovation with them, and uh, they should make sure that their responsible innovation strategies start with the stakeholder uh, identification and materiality uh, analysis. And when we are talking about identifying the, your uh, basically the stakeholders of organization, we want to assess what is called materiality and then uh, meaning that what are the most important uh, aspects of uh, organization that uh, the, the, the organization and uh, that they need to tackle in order to create a responsible innovation strategy. And once we have, uh, we have this dialogue around with the stakeholders, this ongoing dialogue, so then you can, can keep continuing to stay in contact with uh, those stakeholders in order to Go further. So materiality in in uh, in our work is the is just uh, to identify material responsible innovation issues are across a certain context. So in the case of research uh, uh, funding organization for the value chain of research funding organization, we need to see what is the materiality and material issues. And materiality is just a process of organization, including like research uh, RFO, prioritize material. Uh, research uh, responsible innovation issues based on the assessment of impact on uh, the business and Im importance to stakeholder and society. And that's how it starts. So it's a, in, our, our circle is to start from engagement and materiality and then usually go and evolve the strategy along the finding and execute uh, the, uh, the flow comebacks to your organization where it comes to assurance uh, uh, statement and conducting report, which is at the end go back to engagement. So that's the first stage uh, of the uh, the monitoring evaluation, let's say, 
the engagement phase uh, that is very very important I, I would say and then uh, all, all other uh, uh, part, uh, speakers also told about it so and we, we I, I myself I saw not many companies or organization and public agencies that they were diving into responsible responsible innovation without having the engagement phase and directly trying to create a responsible innovation uh, a strategy uh, and uh, then the strategy was not uh, delivering on a stakeholder expectation expectation and then they started off in a bad foot and then so uh, the important thing is that we need we, we need to make sure uh, regardless of the type of organization to responsible innovation start with the stakeholder engagement and materiality uh, analysis and then uh, then we we can go to the evolving uh, uh, evolving uh, um, uh, phase that is you uh, the organization and basically organization should analyze the bench and benchmark the organization current performance and benchmark against peers and where and how organization can address those material issues that identify in the materiality analysis that they have conducted before so for example if the risk of the um, uh, what we are doing for uh, the risk of distrust for instance this is can be a kind of opportunity around uh, distrust uh, for uh, building and uh, building and around this opportunity to have a new product or services for the organi those organization are basically for research funding organization new kind of the fundings that more trustworthiness, uh, which immediate benefits to the norms and the practice of responsible innovation conduct. And so adjusting, uh, adjusting a strategy comes, that is a, a conversation where, where basically organizations need to set a strategic priorities together with the senior, their, manage, their senior management and where they need to build and uh, rebuild and build again the cases, uh, responsible cases, because they, it's not uh, it's not an event and it's kind of the journey. And the organization should start planning uh, the execution. Uh, uh, that means that they set the kind of the uh, key performance indicators, they set the, uh, those targets, they assign responsibilities, and they ensure that those targets are going to be cascaded. So that is something that is uh, comes along the line, so then you need to do it. It's important that the entire uh, organization like research funding organization and those basic stakeholders who are working with them follows those principles uh, regardless of that like uh, EU principles or those principles that uh, this RFO has or other type of principles if the only uh, the research uh, innovation uh, team of those organizations like research funding do, do that and follow that so then uh, that that is the is not a guarantee. Is nobody rather those uh, RRI team or RRI team do it, and the organization keep growing, and then basically you cannot keep uh, keep doing uh, the responsible innovation practices. And for that, two minutes. In, two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. In, for that, in the in the responsible innovation pre standards that we I, I mentioned that we have conducted together with the national and European standardization SEN, uh, we, we set kind of the examples of, uh, not exa examples here, but okay, set of kind of the key performance indicators have been developed and selected and tested uh, together with the pilot uh, organization among other pilots in the uh, different uh, sectors. And, uh, and these uh, KPI or uh, uh, the mode, both qualitative and quantitative indicators, that is a context agnostic, as kind of the backward looking, forward looking indicators, connect responsible business practices to KPI of organization and interactive, we had an interactive session with individual pilots and on-field observation and also meta-analysis of data. Uh, to have a self-reflection and auditing and internal and external reviewers before and uh, before the pilot start and after the pilot finished, and for that, uh, by that the indicators that uh, I, I uh, said they could be considered as an indicative as indicator starting point for the specific uh, tailored uh, um, uh, tailoring responsibility for for that particular organization, and then it comes to the execution. Uh, phase that is the uh, the part that is uh, implementing initiatives that is where engagement is extremely important how do you make sure that the resources have is aligned with the responsible innovation how do you manage uh, a change uh, uh, that needs to happen and how you set the controls 
And we should also remember that uh, responsible innovation does not usually stop at where you, your organization ends. It's actually uh, transpiring boundaries of organization. And that's why it's really important that they share uh, information with the, uh, with the kind of the organization partners. So like a research funding organization uh, share information with their value chain. And once it's done, you can start measuring the uh, performance and that's about collecting data, qualitative and quantitative data, and then also identify plan deviation and also create remediation activities uh, and to mitigate the risk and then uh, go for, uh, for the next step. And uh, by that, so I can go to the, oh, yes, yeah. So the last slide is that this also, this, this basically goes to the stages of responsible innovation monitoring for implementation. So it's, it's a journey is not, you should not basically impact, uh, expect that everybody, every organization goes to the leading edge. So you will go through the monitoring strategy many, many times. And the, depending on the uh, frequency of the reporting organization could be manual, uh, like a annually and quarterly. And it's when it's done, those materiality metrics assessment practices can be seen as from the minimum standards to the leading edge uh, that uh, kind of the stairway uh, levels of assessment criteria and its scoring or if you if you go to the scoring point um, and by that uh, so basically that was the uh, sh uh, introduction for that and if you are interested at Teodel we have uh, two or three online courses uh, linked to responsible innovation, one of which is here, that uh, this online course uh, that uh, by scanning the QR code, you can uh, uh, go through that one. And also the second QR code is about uh, co-change projects, uh, sent you to co-change projects where, uh, where we seek to co-create uh, uh, changes and embed responsible innovation within research funding and research performing organization. And last but not least, the third QR code is, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure you know, the SuperMori uh, ongoing projects monitoring system of RRI, where uh, we are uh, doing uh, monitoring practices. And then we hope that we can have a kind of the self-assessment tool at the end of the projects to assess uh, the responsible innovation practices. And of course, welcome to contact me. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Matt. So there was a comment, uh, very interesting. They want to have your slides. Can you share slides yes. publicly? Yes, he said yes. You are. So, uh, yes, yeah, with the, some uh, revision, yes. Yeah, some <laughs> revisions. So we hope that we can share all these session, uh, present, uh, presentations uh, after revisions. So no confidential information is there. And the other comment was that there is this UK-based uh, uh, standard also that you were oh, yeah. aware of also. But we need to continue. So we hopefully have some time for discussion. So thank you again, Emma. And we move to the ecosystems and quadruple helix. So Nien, floor is yours. Share your presentation and introduce yourself shortly in the beginning. Thank you. We cannot hear you yet. Can you hear me now? We can see and hear well. Thank yes. you. Uh, you see the screen now, right? Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much for introduction. For your introduction, my name is uh, Nien Muin from uh, Nulang Research Institute, and uh, I'm also associate professor at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. Um, I'm a project coordinator of CA project, and in addition, I also join other RI projects like IMRI and Digitary. So thanks again for having me in this session, together with many other guest speakers who have presented um, interesting perspective, from research funding to research performing, and even include business. Um, and in my presentation, I want to combine this perspective together in an uh, ecosystem view. Therefore, uh, my topic today is about the role of quadruple helix actors in building a responsible research and innovation ecosystem. Um, my objective is that I want to present or explain my understanding grounded in literature about the role of quadruple helix in the ecosystem and then what are suggested or right, action for each of them. There's some key concept, the three key concept that I um, will quickly go through it before um, explaining further. Um, what is research and innovation ecosystem, responsible research and innovation ecosystem, and then quadruple helix actor. So this is the abbreviation of each of them. 
Um, in my experience, I know that innovation does not just happen out of the blue. It is the result of the collaboration process of many partners through a long time. And our research and innovation ecosystem refer to the network of actors and the interaction process that emerged in the society. There are so many actors in this research and innovation ecosystem. To simplify that, we categorize this actor into quadruple helix model, which emphasize uh, the broad co cooperation in innovation between four groups of actors. First, academia, university, or higher education system in general. Second, industry business, uh, refer to firms or economic system in general. Government, uh, state or political system in general, including the policymakers funding um, organization here. Civil society, including um, everyone, citizen, even media-based and culture-based public. So um, when we applied RRI into regional context, or regional ecosystem, we observed that the regional actors are not the external decision maker, but they are inside the ecosystem. So our, uh, in our projects, we have objective to explore together um, with the quadruple helix actor, how a new governance model can be articulated. And therefore the four principles of RI can be explained as follow, inclusion, to ensure the participant, uh, participative governance, the actor from the quadruple helix must be engaged and have a voice throughout the whole process. Anticipation is at the core of the shared agenda or the activities. And since it is a process we, uh, for anticipating future scenario and future outcome. So it is very necessary that the actors participate in the process should consider the outcome beyond the regional competitiveness, uh, especially uh, regards to you know, environmental and social issues. Reflexivity. It requires a lot of consideration of various potential uh, outcome, especially the impact on different group of citizens in the region. It requires us to move beyond the intended or desired effect to consider potential unintended and undesirable effect of the process. And finally, responsiveness. It means that the process must respond to criticism and must be legitimate, especially the dependency between the process and societal challenges. That means that the process must be anchored in political bodies and in civil society organizations where stakeholders are represented. When we, have, when we add RI into the ecosystem, it becomes RI ecosystem. So you see like we uh, abbreviate one um, R and I here, so we combine them to become RI ecosystem. The, the difference between R and I ecosystem and RI ecosystem is uh, as below. A normal research innovation ecosystem is composed by a diversity of agents. Each of them has a role, but they are poorly connected in their environment. But in our ecosystem, uh, the actors are strongly connected. They are aware of their role in solving the common challenge and address the priorities of the territories. I find this figure from the paper of Karyanis and his colleagues very useful to explain the, pro the role of quadruple helix actor in the RNI, RRI ecosystem. Uh, so this is figure originally for social innovation, but then it's, I have adapted it into the RI context. In a nutshell, RI is about doing research and innovation with and for society. This RI process required a collaboration from quadruple helix actor in the ecosystem. Each of them have their own roles when contributing in this process. For example, academia can enable RI through educational and training programs and research on the teams related to responsible innovation. The main role of academia is focused on the development of knowledge that can be transferred to other stakeholders in the RI ecosystem. Industry and um, business can support RI through the development of product services that are suitable for social need and the creation of network cluster as well development of appropriate partnership. In general, Industry can be a very important facilitator for RI. Government. Government can facilitate RI through supporting structure, funding, providing business advice, formulating appropriate policy, creating and supporting in incubator and in doing responsible innovation. And finally, civil society constitute the wider environment that also include other groups of actors, not separately. And it can facilitate RI by collaborating and participating in the new ways of thinking, trying to find solutions to social problems. Last but not least, these actors collaborate together. And as a result, there are some common products or activities among them. 
Therefore, one common role that this uh, quadruple helix actor have is collaboration. The important question is that how can this role be translated into our right action? Um, yeah, those are the, the common between them. And uh, in this city project, we have an opportunity to explore this question together. Um, let me introduce you quickly the idea behind our I brought CD projects. We want to establish a self-sustaining research innovation ecosystem by combining our I approach to smart specialization strategy. One important question we ask ourselves during the project is that how can we collaborate together to build a responsible region? To answer that, we need to understand the role of each actor in the, the system. Um, to build a responsible ecosystem, we suggest a, a process model that includes three stages that were and which we implemented in the Siri project. Co-define regional challenge, co-develop regional strategy, co-implement the regional action. And if you see there's a phase uh, for, for us to facilitate mutual learning across um, countries, so it's called transnational learning workshop, where we engage partners from three different territories and city to exchange good practice. And one of the topic that we exchange is that what are the role of quadruple helix in our ecosystem? So here's an example of how we organize our brainstorming workshop. We divide participate in four groups and ask them what are our action based on the roles, uh, the, the previous framework we show, what kind of our action can be connected to these roles? And I will present you quickly the result of our workshop in the next four slides regarding the roles of uh, academia. Um, of course, very first and foremost, our eyes should be integrated in education and training program. And um, to facilitate collaboration between quadruple helix actors, academia must make an effort to transcend the language barriers among actors because we found that we found out that language is not just the English speaking, but also the meaning behind the words we talk. It's totally different between actors. And how to create such common language? Uh, we need a lot of contribution from academia. And academics have the power to provide legitimacy for policy decision. Therefore, they must use this power responsibly. Um, last but not least, academia can make a valuable contribution by mapping the RNI ecosystem and clarifying the interests of various groups within the quadruple helix. They need to reformulate it again in the way that everyone can understand together so that they can speak the same language. When it comes to business industry um, group, of course, um, to provide a business idea, product and service, aligning with social needs and value, which is the, the, the idea behind RI, the business or industry organization need to embed the RI mindset internally through the cultural process, and they need to communicate to the public to increase the awareness. And um, the local word coming up here in our discussion is thinking global, acting local, because the context is a little bit different between region. And um, the, the industry of business play a very important role in uh, creating network partnership, contributing the entrepreneurial discovery process in the ecosystem, which support um, the, the transition to uh, sustainability, green deal, climate change, uh, solving societal challenge. And uh, we also add one more role to the business industry for, for training, for capacity building, because we think that training is not only belong to the, the education sector, it needs to be trained in action um, for, by the business and industry. Therefore, it's very important for them to focus on training the student and younger generation about our own mindset when they have such um, business activities. And then for a citizen group, um, we all agree that citizens should have an active role in creating the demand for a sustainable solution. They need to raise their voice by participating in dialogues and discussion platform for citizens and co-implement and co-monitoring together with um, the uh, policymakers. The implication here is that the language needs to be inclusive so that uh, they can citizens can participate in this process. And there should be different channels to communicate, to include, to be inclusive and the monitoring system should be in place as well. So finally, I come to my last slide, which is our action for the policymakers, including funding organization. We um, all agree that this group of actors play a very special and stronger role than the others because they have a, a broader vision, they have the mandates, and they have larger capacity to solve, to address the conflicts between actors and to propose some solution. And we consider them as our ecosystem leader or convener. And their specific role, our action would be created a 
to create a space for portable hack, um, Helix actor to connect and to discuss. Um, to ensure the responsible regional planning process, which I introduced before in the city model, and we also put emphasis on the participate governance, including monitoring and evaluation system. This should be in place so that all the actors can participate. And they need to promote new actor, new sectors and industry that address uh, societal challenges, analyzing the system initiative, uh, initiative through the lens of responsibility. For example, uh, digitalization. Uh, now we need to put in a lens of Green Deal or other uh, topic that uh, address the societal challenges. And finally, last but not least, they should use the funding criteria to send signal for promoting an RI mindset. The bottom line is that they, they can't do this alone. They need support from the joint action from other actor group. And this list is not exhaustive. It should be combined with uh, suggested action, which have been addressed in other guest speaker a presentation this is the, in the, this session. And I hope that my presentation can contribute to a larger picture would consider ecosystem perspective. So those are just our, you know, original um, idea and brainstorming, which need to be added and discussed among the other project and people as well. So thank you very much uh, for your attention. More information can be found on our website. Thank you, Nian, very much. Uh, we uh, had a permission to prolong the session 15 minutes, so thank you, Helmut, for that. I hope that everybody can still stay with us because this uh, there will be uh, all of this uh, comment and presentation. Uh, for uh, Nian, I will put three uh, questions or comments together. So, because uh, as you know, there is also the concept of quintuple helix, uh, and Gabriel raised that up. And then Marcus and Nora is saying that uh, we have these SDGs, we have this, um, let's say, social, environmental, econo economic, sustainability, uh, triangulity. But uh, to which extent then RRI commits to linking with and fulfilling the environmental dimension of development from your union? So how this is really emphasized, let's say, in, in quadruple helix? Hmm. Thank you very much. And um, Veiko, I think that the question has come across a lot in our discussion as well whenever we uh, propose some other new model. And the uh, quintuple uh, helix is actually the quadruple helix that add environmental mm. uh, inside there. And uh, the issues here is that we are talking about the actors, the group of actors. Environmental itself is not an actor. Therefore, mm -hmm. the, the quintuple helix it have that kind of problem. And we believe environmental is so important and it needs to be the topic for the quadruple helix actor to solve together. So it's a context. So therefore, in our presentation, uh, we always put the societal challenge, environmental issues under um, underlying topic where the quadruple helix can join together to solve it. Okay. Thank you very much, Nian. So we, we move to the last presentation. So Olavi, please, you have shared your presentation and introduce yourself shortly and give us the comment and presentation about that how these you from your perspective rri can support let's say the cluster ecosystem and your organization thank yes, you I hope, thank you and uh, i hope my presentation is on, on yes there and you can hear me yes um yes very good uh, uh, possibility to be here and and meet you and and listen uh, and hear this uh, here has been a question of how to get impacts and and there is certain gap between strategies and operational work and everyday work and our uh, concept is very practical how to implement that and uh, what is the environment is police environment where we have tested this and and we come from the Tampere University Police College and and it is under Ministry of Interior and very often it is complex how to discuss with police and and how it comes uh, possible with people and here we can see the um, change function, functional pipeline management model what police has had a long time but now we have 
in several years in whole of Europe changed and, and better educated police and process functional pipeline management has changed process-based program-based operations and what tools we need there. There is how to meet and collaborate local people. It's complex model of activity. What complexes are there? And here is uh, CMO, certain context, certain mechanism uh, uh, create these outcomes. And here is uh, Finnish uh, Engstrom's model, how instruments or tools are coming in communities. There are certain rules how to use that subjects use that and what is division of labor or or processes how to share the uh, share those and how we can get outcomes last uh, change the community and this has been very uh, big problem but uh, in in police we have uh, working we working all times between the problems and and we can see that uh, um, it is uh, same time the possibility to uh, find uh, solutions of there then we uh, 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 created security design canvas very practical tool how to uh, uh, change police culture from le, le plan to curriculums and how students and, and communities can uh, learn together. Relationship between education and values has especially been discussed in research uh, a long time and, and this is typical for uh, members share long uh, education and strong professional codes based on values and how values in education must be seen as part of wider human development process it uh, what makes person fall and, and culturally politically and mentally full and and regarding adult education and leadership competencies attention should also be paid on values related to working life cultures and that's why we created uh, as i here present a service design canvas and it is security concept and first we um, think who are the customer segment in our pilot we focused on on police uh, basic workers and and uh, they are bachelor level students and end users are so, uh, certainly these ecosystems or communities and and especially minorities we designed learning platform addressing and prioritizing the understanding and learning of rri part of learning needs in communities and citizens setting goals while recognizing how various resources, activities, partners and channels may have an effect on the outcomes. And collaboration here, as earlier we heard, is, is important. Are we on same channel? Very often we are in uh, wrong channel or we have uh, wrong tools. Uh, what channel we have used here uh, to creating this innovation? We used learning platform, Moodle platform, then of course face-to-face -face meetings before COVID, and then we have uh, Teams uh, connections and emails, and uh, we created a serious game too here. And how we created customer relationship one common demonation of development work has been conceptualization and local security work, work should already be responsible engaging partners and seeking sustainable solutions to these issues what uh, police workers and students will meet and 
basis of co cooperation is organized in social labs or living labs, as here we in RRI uh, Horizon has created. Students have participated in these labs, living labs, what we created in Police University College. And then we uh, see and, and uh, 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 tested this, um, our um, service design canvas or security concept as a whole. Uh, uh, it, and the aim was that we can get a new responsible um, uh, um, possibility and ecosystem how it works in, in um, police work. And uh, what we created and what resources we need here, we had um, Uvascular University, Laurea, Applied Science University, Police University College and VTT. And we together uh, shaped that new model and, and focused our first learning, learning platform, those students in, in ecosystem. Then we have created and, and it, it has gone wider and uh, seems that police can use that in everyday work and especially in research development and innovation sector. And it has been, uh, um, they can, uh, students can ha uh, st um, choose themselves the courses and who has selected this uh, service design canvas uh, model uh, and, and uh, the learning process. They have been very sat satisfied of this and, and they have used on, on ecosystems these. What we have, have had uh, key partners, there are, are those academic, academic communities and, and business and industry and policy makers, civil society organizations. And it seems that it works and, and uh, cost structure is very, uh, um, very cheap. It consists only um, uh, time expenses game designing take some money. Uh, mostly it uh, needs coffee and bun because it is mm -hmm. uh, application of, of this Finnish context. Exactly. And, yeah. and this, this is important to meet the maturity and, and, and meet people and be on same channel. We are on road again and we hope and will like, we have tested this uh, and co-worked in many European countries too and in several um, European police uh, educational system and we continue and if you are interested there are my my email here and and you can call and and take contact thank you thank you Oliver it's great to hear that the pilot was kind of a success and it's continuing. So now I want to invite uh, Mika to wrap up and uh, probably uh, put us to discuss also with a couple of minutes, but Mika, are you there? So how do you conclude? Do we have answers to questions? Is it possible? How is it possible? And, and, and what we should do? Thank you, Veikko. I'm always very delighted to have these mission impossibles uh, to fulfill, like, you know, summarizing this kind of talks, which are dealing issues uh, so diverse. So, but however, I have tried, and uh, I, I think that we have at least five points as uh, takeaways over here. And uh, the first one is, I think it, it's, it's dealing with policy choices. What kind of integration on the level of policy making error I have to, to other aims, to other existing policies of the funding organizations in general, I think so. How it is embedded actually to the existing aims and existing targets of the organizations as well. 
is it fitting or is it not fitting over there? We heard uh, already that it can be fitted over there very well, but it requires also some uh, political will or policy will, if you like. I think so. The second point is policy operationalization, I think so. So uh, we need to develop kind of concrete ways to embed this kind of thinking in, in, in policy making. It requires, for instance, uh, elaborated criteria for funding incentives over there, different programs. It requires information sharing, for instance. How to do this? What does it mean, actually? So uh, it's, it's, a, it's quite a um, multi-dimensional issue actually when we are trying to embed it in, uh, in, in the, in the uh, po policy making. Third point is what I heard from the presentations is the importance of self-organization and how we can actually support the self-organization of, of organizations, uh, research performers, uh, firms, uh, and so on and so on. So this is actually uh, uh, an issue of, uh, of uh, research finances as well, but also how the actors themselves take up these issues. So, and uh, what is the role of self-organization actually over there? So, and in this kind of um, efforts, I think, for instance, what EMAD was introducing, that kind of frameworks, they can support the uptake of RRI or responsibility thinking in general in organizations. That's very nice uh, uh, example of that, how we can support it in practice. Uh, my fourth point is orchestration of actors. As we heard, uh, we usually have a kind of, a, it was called here uh, tri uh, quad a quadruple helix, triple helix, quadruple helix, or quintuple helix, whatever you want to call it. I call it an ecosystem of actors uh, as well. So how do we actually orchestrate the, the actions uh, of, of various actors towards the shared goals, shared vision building, collaboration and networking, which is actually driving action towards kind of more responsible way of acting, doing research and innovation. So, and as we heard uh, from Nian, is that uh, funding organizations may have a uh, decisive role in this, because somebody needs to have a kind of leading role in this. This, this work uh, 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 after all, uh, so that uh, somebody is dry, uh, driving it. Uh, leading is perhaps a little bit too much to say, actually, because the, the actors are, are equal with there, but somebody is needed to orchestrate the action over there. Uh, my fifth point concerns learning. I think that is uh, very important. Um, last but not least, as the saying goes, we need to uh, learn uh, from experiences from different organizations uh, and, and also uh, from country to country. This is very nice experience over here, I think, so that we, we learned a lot different kinds of ex experiences and examples and benchmarks from different countries already now, but I think that what is very essential that we should have that kind of network and we have actually tried to develop such network, networks where people who are key actors in, in taking up RRI uh, related thinking, responsible innovation, uh, may share their experiences, support their actions, learn uh, from peer to peer uh, uh, and from their experiences. I think this is, these are my, what I was try, uh, picked up from the uh, very excellent, very nice presentations. Thank you all. It was a real pleasure to, to hear your, what you were saying, and it was very important to hear what you were saying. Uh, really, really made my day today. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mika. Uh, uh, so, I think that we need to close now, even though I think that there would be a long discussion and, and of course all those presentations would have needed at least two hours. This would have been three-day 
workshop someday somewhere very nice place together but as we know this was scheduled for one and a half hour so we need to close now thank you organizers erich helmut sauna pia thank you presenters uh, we will try to share all the presentations with you as we saw that there's lots of interest in those and i guess that's all so thank you very much and bye-bye.